Thank you, John. Ambassador Romer, Minister Abdullah, you honor us with your presence. Thank you so much for being here today. I am particularly happy to be here today because this is just the latest chapter in a very long and productive relationship between OPEC and India. I'm also pleased because when your Prime Minister visited Washington in November, President Obama announced that OPEC would be holding this conference. So I'm very happy to be here today to fulfill that commitment. It's always a good thing to do what the boss says you're going to do. Um, when we first thought about the idea of having a conference, I mentioned this to a few people in Washington. And I have to tell you, there were some people who were a little skeptical. They said, you know, do you realize, Larry, there is a, 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 an international global economic recession going on? Do you realize that people aren't traveling? A lot of businesses have curtailed their budgets. They're not going to conferences anymore. I think this is a little bit of a crazy idea. And so I went out talking to the conference, about the conference, and one of the first places I went was to Silicon Valley, California, the heart of the clean technology and renewable industry in America. And uh, I visited with uh, great friends of mine, great supporters of OPEC, uh, the Greater San Jose Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And I said, I'm coming out to California, can I meet with you? And they said, we'll, we're gonna put on a breakfast. And I said, okay, great. And they said, 6.30 a.m. And I thought to myself, I said, are you sure that's really early? I don't think I would come to a breakfast for me at 6.30 a.m. And they said, no, 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 we're, we'll do it at 6.30. We're, you know, it's not a problem. And so 6.30 came, I was out in San Jose. I walked into a room. The room was absolutely packed. And there were people in that room that had gotten up in the middle of the night and driven two and three hours from all parts of California, people who had flown in the night before in order to be there to learn about the conference because they had ideas and they were entrepreneurs and they wanted to take advantage of it. So I knew we were onto a good thing and I'm actually pleased to say that many of my friends from San Jose are sitting out there in the audience today. The bottom line is that whatever particular reason brought you here today, there is one single belief that I think unites everybody in this room, and that is that harnessing new forms of energy is the defining challenge of the 21st century. To a large extent, this is driven by the need to address the impact of climate change as we have come to understand it and experience it. But, but it is much more than that. It also means undertaking new efforts like clean energy initiatives that will create jobs, improving people's access to cleaner and more affordable energy, and creating green, green partnerships to reduce poverty through sustainable and equitable development. As President Obama has said, the choice we face is not between saving our environment and saving our economy. The choice we face is between prosperity and decline. <coughs> While the consequences of ignoring climate change are clear, the challenge of harnessing new forms of energy in emerging markets might seem particularly daunting. But I believe that opportunities in renewable energy and clean technology investment are nowhere greater in large part because the distribution of energy generated by fossil fuels in the developing world is often difficult and expensive. At the same time, there is an incredible creativity, innovation, and spirit of entrepreneurship in these sectors. As I mentioned, I have traveled all around to promote this conference over the past few months. I have been overwhelmed by the fact that for every problem or challenge in the renewable and clean technology field, someone seems to have devised a solution or found an integrative way to reuse something we used to throw in the garbage. 
It is amazing. It is overwhelming. I believe, therefore, the challenge is not to find solutions. The challenge is to encourage, to foster, and to support the innovation and entrepreneurship that is already creating solutions and that is sitting here in this room this morning. This is why renewable and clean technology are OPEC's top priorities. This is why OPEC has made a commitment to reduce the greenhouse gases in its own portfolio by 50% over the next 15 years. And this is why we have organized this conference. Let me also be clear that we have not invited you here simply to take part in an, in an academic discussion of investment opportunities. We have invited you here to provide you with the tangible, real-world information, ideas, and resources necessary to take advantage of those opportunities. We invited you here to meet future partners and to identify potential sources of funding. Each panel discussion you will hear during the next two days will focus on the one or two crucial questions specific to its sector, be it solar energy, wind, or clean technology that can turn investment from an abstraction into a reality. And I promise you, you will learn a great deal about the resources available to support your investment. Ultimately, I know that most of you were drawn to this conference by the great investment potential which resides in the renewable energy and clean technology sectors. A 2009 report by the Renewable Energy Policy Network found that between 2004 and 2008, solar capacity increased sixfold, wind power capacity increased 250%, and total power capacity for new renewables increased 75%. In 2000, energy technology represented just one half of 1% 1 of all venture capital investments. Today, it's more than 10%. And most forecasts predict that this trend will not only continue, it will dramatically accelerate. Yet I am certain that you are also here because you understand that coupled with that potential, that untapped potential, is a series of challenges which can make investment in these sectors sometimes difficult. On a daily basis, technological advances bring sectors like wind and solar energy closer to an efficiency of scale that would make their impact truly significant but they are not there yet. And likely the greatest challenge facing each of you is access to the kind of financing that would make such investments commonplace. But financing, especially in this global economy, is still not always easy to find or to access. OPEC's task at this conference is to serve as a catalyst to help you take advantage of the opportunities you may find and to help you to overcome the obstacles you may confront. I can't predict what the tangible results of this conference will be. I hope that these two days will just be the beginning and that like a stone cast into a pond, the ripples from this conference will change the landscape forever and continue to be felt in the months and in the years ahead. But I can say with certainty that increasing investment in the renewable energy and clean technology sectors throughout the emerging markets will play an important role in meeting the challenges of harnessing new forms of energy in the 21st century. Thank you very much.